can't stand this any longer. Henrietta, where are you going? What's the matter with you? Everybody's watching. I've had enough of this racket. Racket? This is music of such divinity that it fills my halls with ecstasy. And you're ruining everything. Honestly, I don't understand how you could waste so much money on something so trivial rather than doing your godforsaken duty. Duty? Isn't it my duty to bring enlightenment? Isn't it my duty to encourage someone so astoundingly talented like Sebastian so that he may elevate us all to the heavens? It is your duty to care about the well-being of your country first! War is at hand and you know it. Or would you rather kneel to a despicable French or Austrian Catholic? Because that's exactly what's going to happen if you don't get your act together right now and do what you're bloody supposed to do. You keep away from my stool. Look what you've done with that. I'm only trying to help. You put bloody flour in there. Flour will make it creamier. Creamy. You turn it into bleeding porridge. That's what you've done. Oh, don't be so absurd. My mommy used to add on a slice of bread. Calm down. And then cook that for hours. Bloody. No potatoes. You. Sunny, no flour. <gasps> Just you. Say, this is... Bah, this is... You. Oh, that's enough. Stop it! Isn't there a single day I can come home in peace? That's it. Shut the fuck up, Dorothea! Go to your room, now! <laughs> Was that really necessary? The girl's troubled. After everything she's been through... Don't you start! I'm not in the mood to argue with you! What's the matter? Nothing! Don't give me that. This was... my moment. This was... Never have I been so proud of an accomplishment. The Chacon's the most incredible piece I've ever written. After all this time, I had a feeling that our Lord's forgiven me. I felt the spirit of Christ running through my veins as my pen wrote down those notes. Variations that came to me from an enlightened spirit. Inspiration originating from the very same holy fire that had touched our Lord's Apostles. Was it her again? She walked out. I was giving the best performance of my life and she just walked out. I'm so sorry. That's terrible. That amuser. That uncultivated, heartless woman. You shouldn't let it touch you, like rain falling off a roof. She's the prince's spouse, and that's never going to change. And she's pregnant. Therefore, you must put it beside you, or it will consume you entirely. I wish it were that easy. Hello, old friend. Philip, what a surprise to see you. Papa, Philip. Here's my favourite godson. Look how big you've become. <laughs> oh, I can hardly pick you up. I'm so glad you're here. Let me present my wife to you, Magdalena. I'm enchanted by such a heavenly appearance. I've heard so much about you. Oh, it's an honour to finally meet you, Master Telemann. Oh, masters for old men, please. Call me Philip. Let's make ourselves comfortable in the lounge. Would you like some ale? I've got a nice cool cask in the cellar. How can I refuse? <laughs> I'll get you both a pint. So, how's life in Hamburg? Mm. Oh, you know, very busy as usual. I'm also the messenger of ill tidings. Good old Adam's deceased. Adam Rankin? No, this, this can't be. Well, 
he had a very long and prosperous life. True, but it's still kind of a shock to me. I met him only a year ago, and he looked so lively and, and spirited. <sighs> yes, that was him, right up to the end. For the rest, you did well refusing that job at St James's. I sometimes envy you living in such a quiet place in the countryside with only one master to appease. Used to be. As of late, a wicked creature has my patron's ear. You mean the princess? Yes, I've heard that she's not very uh, easy going. That's an understatement. I'm afraid that one day she may even become my ruin. These are dark times indeed. Look at what happened in Dresden. Yes, the, the new electors laid off the entire royal orchestra. Just like that. Honestly, every day I say prayers of gratitude that I have a permanent job. I wish I could say the same. But when you and me, I've been having trouble sleeping ever since the prince got married to that. Then why don't you apply for a job that offers you more security for the future? More security? I'm afraid that doesn't exist anymore. Yes, it does. In Leipzig, they're looking for a new cantor for St Thomas's Church. I know, it's a step back from being musical director, also as far as pay is concerned, but you'd be in charge of music in the entire city nonetheless, and you'd be employed by the city council and therefore not depend on the whims of a master. To be frank, they've asked me if I wanted the job, but I'm too busy in Hamburg. But if you want, I could put in a good word for you. Would you do that for me? Of course I would. With your abilities, you could have that job right away. That scoundrel. What do you mean, Mr. Mayor? Isn't it clear to you, then? Master Telemann has obviously abused our offer in order to exact more generous conditions in Hamburg. And now, he's discarded us. Do you really believe... I'm certain of it. And also Master Grobner of Darnstadt informed us that he didn't get leave from the Prince of Hesse in order to work here. Then who have we remaining? There is still the candidature of that Master Bark, Kapellmeister at the Court of Cothan. Wasn't that the... Yes! Brilliant organist! But what use is that to us? Personally, I thought the cantonar he performed was way too theatrical, don't you agree? Exaggerated. Bombastic, even. Very true. More importantly, I'm having serious doubts about his academic qualities. He's never been to university! He did pass our theological exam. All right, what good is that to us? Does that imply that he has the necessary qualities to instruct our children? We cannot assert that he'd be a worthy successor to the late Master Kunau, can we? Of course not, but given time he may yet become an adequate teacher. <sighs> this issue has long outstayed its welcome. But... We cannot allow a hiatus to occur in a tradition that our cities held dear since 1212. Therefore, if we can't have the best, I say that we should settle for mediocrity. I concur, Mr. Mayor. However, Cothan is a deprived Calvinist stronghold, and even though Master Bark was raised a Lutheran, we must guarantee that he won't spew any Calvinist talk at our school. That goes without saying. We'll emphasize it in the bylaws. Now, all in favor of endorsing Master Bach's candidature. I'm still convinced that we're taking an unnecessary risk. If you don't mind me saying so, Mr. Ernesti, uh, that Bach seemed very arrogant in his ways and his music. 
Do we really want him to inspire our faithful youth and to lead our congregation in prayer? I know what you're implying, Master Garner, but you should take heed not to drown in excessive ambition. Patience is one of the seven heavenly virtues. Seek our Lord in your work as organist. Your time will come. I shall not leave town without written permission from the mayor. At all times shall I obey the inspectors and directors of the most worshipful city council. I shall not take freedom of initiative. My music shall not be too long nor too theatrical. I shall instruct the boys of the St. Thomas Institute in Latin, Greek and religion, and if indisposed, I shall appoint a worthy replacement at my own expense. With the 55 boys who reside at the school, I shall create four choirs, one for each of the city's main churches. What is it you're reading? The contract for that job in Leipzig. It's preposterous. Listen. Uh, I shall write a complete cantata for every Sunday service, plus other works for celebrations or on request of the Worshipful City Council. I shall set a bright and good example to the boys by a sober and secluded life. I shall always defend and promote the honour and reputation of the Worshipful City Council. Women are not to engage in musical exhibitions. What? Wait a minute. What they're saying is that I'm out of a job? I'm afraid so. Oh, God! And you're fine with all of this? <laughs> Music is my life! How can you even consider all of that rubbish knowing that it'll ruin my life? We can always make music at home like we used to. Oh, that's a great solace. You know how much I enjoy doing concerts. Plus, I'd earn only a quarter of my current wager. A quarter? I know. Stop rubbing it in and think about the future for a moment. How long do you think before I'll end up redundant here? Half of the orchestra is already gone. The prince is no longer the man I knew. He's changed. Not because he wanted to, but because he must. We need stability. For ourselves and above all for our children. I can't go on with that sort of Damocles hanging above our heads. There have to be better options. Another Earl or Duke or whatever. Believe me, there isn't. We've been... Extremely lucky here, and we must give thanks to our Lord every day for the joys he bestowed on us. But we must also accept that they're over, and that he's laid out a new path for us. So, how's Leipzig? So it's been decided? Yes, we're moving to Leipzig in May. What do you think? I don't know. I've never been there. I'm sure that you're going to love it. It's a big city. It has six main churches and 30,000 people are living there. There's lots of activity, so you never get bored. Bored? I don't have time to get bored. Magdalena will have to stay at home in Leipzig, so she'll be able to help you a bit more with the daily chores. Oh, God, please, no! I never said that she'd be replacing Mummy, but eventually you'll have to learn to get along. If you at least try to get to know her a bit better, then you'd realise that she's not all that bad. No, she isn't. I'll never get married, so I can't be forgotten. Sebastian. 
It's tearing my heart out, Your Grace, but my children are growing up and I need certainty for the future. Didn't I promise that there would always be a place for you here? You did, Your Grace, and you are most generous, but I'm afraid that circumstances beyond your control may decide otherwise. You're increasingly under pressure, Your Grace. I can see it in your eyes, in your gestures, in the way you're losing sleep. Nobody knows me like you do. And you're right. I haven't been myself of late. All of these political games and ostentations over a scrub of land where the people of France are slaughtering cats and dogs in order not to die of starvation. So, there is nothing which might make you refrain from leaving? I'm afraid not, Your Grace. Then, do not regret your decision. I'd never forgive myself. I beg your pardon, Your Grace. That I let you go.